Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. I'm joined by Nicole Dines and Paul Strom. Nicole, let's start with you. What stories have you been watching over, over the last seven days? Well, we're not in summer mode yet. There still to be a lot happening uh, in the market. Uh, in the UK, Amazon announced it will create over 4,000 new permanent jobs in the UK, which brings its permanent workforce to over 75,000. And he said he has invested £1 billion in the UK and is now it's created 40,000 jobs just in the last three years, and he's become one of the top 10 UK employers. Um, and he, he wanted to say that the jobs are spread across uh, the UK, they're not just uh, near London, and they include um, you know, new fulfillment centers that is open recently, but also operation teams, tech, software, product management and engineering and what they call the high quality jobs. Going to the continent in Brussels, the office market seems to be very buoyant. They've been very in the spotlight this week with two major acquisitions. La Francaise, uh, real asset managers, sold um, to Whitewood Fund, a uh, two building complex uh, near the North Station in the city, while in- Investcorp bought two properties near the Gare du Midi uh, from Monument Immo Management. And what links the two, uh, the two deals is that both have sort of high income producing assets leads to very strong tenants. So there seems to be, you know, still a lot happening in the office market provided this good quality buildings with strong tenants. Um, BNP Paribas exceeded its 500 million uh, target by raising over 700 million euros uh, for its second senior commercial real estate debt fund, which brings total assets uh, for its uh, fund to over 1 billion. And Christophe de Montserrat, the head of uh, real estate debt, said that in this pandemic environment of increased volatility, high inflation and rising interest rates, it's a very appropriate time to invest in real estate debt because it offers uh, attractive returns and some security. And going over to Italy again, um, a very strong market at the moment. Uh, on, on the office side in Milan, we've often talked about the sort of interest in you know, international investors have in Milan. It's been confirmed this this week in Porta Nuova, which is the new business district that's been developed by Coima, the Italian company, KPMG has leased a big building. The professional services uh, firm has entered into a very long lease. So it's moving its Italian headquarters to Porta Nuova, a t- new shiny 24-story building, which has been built, very sustainable building. And um, it's a long-term rental deal, which uh, and it, it joins a long list of, of companies that are that have invested in Porta Nuova, which is very much sort of shaping up to be the new CBD in Milan. And um, still in Italy, JLL has entered into a commercial partnership with Abitare Co, which is one of the biggest real estate uh, agencies in Italy, to respond to international investors' growing demand for integrated residential services, it said. As Barbara Cominelli, who's the CEO of JLL Italy, said, the idea is to give uh, institutional investors a one-stop shop, so they will cover the entire value chain of residential real estate and also they cover the, the whole of Italy will be the main cities like Rome and Milan but also uh, secondary towns and then and, um, tourist destinations as well and with this JLL enters the, the B2C market uh, in Italy in line with this global strategy to, to do that in all the markets they have a presence in and that as they say responds to investors demand for, for more services in the residential sector. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see see that focus. I think there on on the residential. Um, interesting as well around the the debt markets. Um, you can see a lot of companies beginning to focus on um, debt um, as a as a real focus for the investment side. Um, and you've seen movements of, for example, Dan Potoff going to Tristan Capital in 2021, things like that, where you're seeing more and more of the investment houses um, beginning to, to, to look at debt. Um, Paul, what have you been tracking? Illustrating what we're told is likely to be an increasing trend, Catella Investment Management Benelux acquired an office to residential conversion near Amsterdam in Harlem. The company's paying 65 million euros for the former offices of publisher VNU, uh, the Salon Port Tower, which is it's buying on behalf of the Catella European Residential 3 Fund from, from developer Weda, which is in partnership with Going Dutch Development. Building works due to start this month. The office block is to be converted into a residential tower that provides 162 affordable apartments and a small amount of commercial space and it's being refurbished to nearly zero energy building standards uh, according to the EU Directive on Sustainable Energy Performance. It will include things like a geothermal heat pump and uh, uh, rooftop solar panels uh, to provide most of the building's energy. The deal demonstrates that this sort of asset is going to have 
institutional acceptance and the, the supply of housing in the mid-range rental segment is scarce across the Netherlands. And, and in terms of sustainability, affordability, social impact, Catella said it ticks, it ticks all the boxes. Also more on the evolution of real estate into real assets that include infrastructure. A Polish developer of clean energy assets called Pad Res, which is owned by Kojima Europe, Griffin Capital Partners and Pad Res's CEO, Marius Adamczewski, have obtained financing for a 35 megawatt photovoltaic solar farm east of Poznan. Kojima Europe and Griffin Capital acquired a majority stake in Padres in September 2021, since when the company's acquired 13 projects with total capacity of 350 megawatts. Santander uh, Bank Polska and BNP Paribas Bank Polska are providing the credit uh, facility and construction of the new farm uh, started in April. Lastly, CBRE research indicates that about 152 million euros was invested in European real estate in the first half of the year, the strongest ever first half figure and 10% of the, uh, ahead of the first half of 2021. The previous first half record was 151 billion euros, which was invested in the first half of 2018. That might seem surprising given the changing uh, economic context and the headwinds of rising interest, inflation and geopolitics geopolitical uncertainty. However, CBRE also points out that the majority, 84 billion of the first half figure, was invested in the first quarter of this year. It says that increased borrowing costs and economic uncertainty slowed investment activity in in Q2 when volumes declined 11% to 68 billion. Uh, The poorer performance of the second quarter was not universal, uh, and Ireland was 47% ahead, Belgium 134% ahead, both posting record Q2 volumes. Uh, Italy was 53% up, Spain 44%, and and France 24%. Chris Brett, Managing Director, uh, EMEA Capital Markets, said that uh, despite higher borrowing costs, investors retain a strong appetite for commercial property, particularly as a a hedge against inflation. But the firm says inflation and central bank rate increases have affected property prices around the world. And it says the the ECB uh, is expected to increase interest rates for the first time since 2011 in the coming week. So demand may perhaps respond slightly differently after that. Yeah, I mean, that that discussion around interest rates is one that I've been having a a lot. And you can see that both in terms of a lot of the interviews that we've been doing, but also a lot of discussions privately that we've been having across the market. I'm interesting you mentioned Ireland there. I saw reinvest buying Dublin office for 65 million from uh, from Henderson Park. Also, logistics continuing to be in the news. Panatoni starting a giant project in Poland in Lower Silesia, but also Garba Core Plus Logistics Fund raising 400 million at, at its first close, which again suggests that there's still you know, a large amount of capital seeking opportunities in, in the logistics space. Sustainability uh, also across the news again this week. We featured a really interesting interview uh, with Philip Blau, CEO and founder of Inax, and very much focused on the energy side, um, but also saying that investors and owners are going to have to really split that into steps in order to, to achieve net zero. And also Axra Investment Managers announcing that they're acquiring 50 Fenchurch Street in London from Cloth Workers Company. That's ahead of a 650,000 square foot landmark office development. So a huge development there in London. Um, And that very much focused on the gap in the market that there is for high quality, sustainable and well-focused offices, um, according to Isabel Skimama, who's, of course, global head of Axra IM Alts. So really interesting to see those trends coming through as well for the development side. Um, Thank you, Paul. Um, Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for watching us and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the real asset markets. (music) 